All right, so now let's talk about a topic that a lot of us wish we didn't have to deal with, and this is pain. All right, so we're gonna talk about what kind of pain is, what different types of pain they are, there are, and some ways to hopefully treat pain. So guys, pain is an unpleasant sensory sensation. It occurs when tissue is damaged. So when tissue gets damaged, they release chemicals, which ultimately are gonna stimulate certain receptors in your body called nociceptors. Those nociceptors are the pain receptors and they send the signal to the brain that tells you that pain is present. The brain then also helps determine what kind of pain you're dealing with. Now, pain is associated with many conditions. Okay, it's a big deal. And a big thing with it though is it is a protective mechanism. You need it in order to know when something is wrong in your body. It is the most common reason that people seek medical attention. Guys, when we are uncomfortable, when there's discomfort present, that's what normally sends us to the doctor. Okay, and so pain is normally the number one reason of why we go see a medical professional. Now pain can also be used to aid in diagnosis. This is one of the reasons why normally when you go in they're going to ask you what your pain level is. What kind of pain are you dealing with? Now this is a subjective thing. Every patient is going to have a different idea of how high pain is and what their pain tolerance is depends on a number of factors. Pain threshold guys is the perception of pain. How that person perceives that pain can be influenced by a number of things. It could be influenced by affective, behavior, cognitive issues, sensory, and even psychological factors. So in other words, guys, it could be affected on how, how the person was brought up. How a parent reacts whenever their child has pain could affect how they see pain in the future. Some parents, when they their kid falls down, they would make a big deal about it, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, are you okay?" And then the pain, then the, the the child thinks that that is the pain that they may deal with. Whereas other parents are like, "Oh, don't look at them, don't look at them. They may not think they're hurt if you don't look at them." There's different ways that you can um, potentially deal with that as a parent. Um, behavior could also be part of that. Some people just want to be really tough. And they don't want to show that pain, even though that it may be occurring. And so they may tell you that it's not as bad as that is, as it maybe is. They may not understand all about that pain. They might have an inflammatory sensory issue where they feel pain more often. Like when you have a sunburn, hot and cold is, is affected greater when you have that sunburn. So there could be an underlining issue as well. All right. So our pain threshold and how we deal with pain can be affected by lots of different things. Now, we can go from having no pain to having severe pain, all right, and anything in between. Some pain is more tolerable than others. But guys, when we talk about pain, some pain is considered acute pain. Acute pain is a sudden onset. It came on a lot of times due to some sort of trauma or, or um, injury. Chronic pain, on the other hand, is persistent. It lasts for a very long time. This is if you are having this pain for three months or longer, we would consider that chronic pain. Some pain is termed as superficial. This is going to be pain that's kind of right on the skin area, not very deep. Deep pain may affect more of your organs like your um, muscles or tendons or joints where they're deeper. If we're talking about really deep pain, like with your internal organs, that is known as visceral pain. Visceral pain is going to deal with the internal organs themselves. Now, sometimes our pain signals get crossed. There's a little bit of a haywire that happens whenever pain gets sent to the brain. This can mean the brain could interpret the pain in a different area, and this is known as referred pain. We see one of the most common referred pain is when somebody's having a heart attack. Their heart's actually what's hurting, but they get chest pain, and then they get pain down their left arm. Okay, and so the pain can be referred to a different area based on this kind of which nerves are being triggered with that pain. And then of course, phantom pain. Phantom pain is if you've lost a limb, okay, even if it's as small as a finger or it could be a leg or whatever it may be, and you're still feeling sensations and pain in that area, even though it's not present. And the reason is, guys, we didn't remove all those nerves. Those nerves would have extended all the way down to your foot, but now they were cut off at the knee. It doesn't mean that if they don't, if they fire, they're going to send a signal like it's coming from the bottom of your foot, even though the foot's no longer there. Okay, and that's considered what we call phantom pain. 
So what are some consequences when we have pain and especially pain that's very high and it's not controlled and the patient is very uncomfortable? Well, it's going to increase their stress response. This is going to increase the release of certain stress hormones and their stress response will be heightened. This in turn, though, then affects their immune system. When your stress response is high, your immune system becomes depressed. It is not able to do its job like it should. This is one reason why when people are really stressed out, they tend to get sick because their immune system does not have the ability to fight like normal. The respiratory system can also be affected. When somebody is in a lot of pain, it actually can affect their breathing and it can decrease their lung function. Their cardiovascular system, because of the high stress and the pain, it puts them at a higher risk of developing um, myocardial infarctions, which are heart attacks, or even having strokes. Um, it increases blood pressure. All right, so the cardiovascular system can be affected. We see when you're in pain, especially if pain is in a specific area, it may decrease your mobility. If you're having pain in your leg, it may cause it where you can't walk like you normally would. Okay, it affects your ability to get around. There could also be some psychological consequences when you're in chronic pain, also some social ones. When we look at this idea of this pain, it could cause fear, fear of no, not knowing what's wrong, fear of like going to that worst case scenario, anger, depression, anxiety. It can reduce your relationships in the sense that you don't build them like you should. You don't maintain them like you should. You start to isolate yourself okay, because of this pain. It also could trigger addictions. Individuals who are in a lot of pain, if they seek help and they're given certain kinds of medications like opiates, it could actually trigger addictive behaviors and that could also affect them psychologically and socially. So what are some risk factors for pain? Well guys, age, we kind of look at that, but really everybody deals with pain all the way from little babies all the way to adults. The problem though is if they're able to communicate that pain and seek help. So the very young has an issue with this because they can't communicate to you. They just cry and you have to try to figure out where their pain may be. And even the very old if they're not able to communicate anymore. Gender is another thing. We see that women tend to deal with more chronic type of pain more often than men. That doesn't mean that men don't get it and that women deal with pain better or whatever. That's not the case. We actually see that women tend to have a lower threshold for pain on the average and they deal with that chronic pain and it could be related to hormone issues. Okay, there could be a hormone relationship there when we talk about gender. Um, social factors. Social factors could be things like income, education, um, their location. If they don't have access to good medical care, they may not go seek it even if pain is present. Um, there could be a cultural issue. In some cultures or even religions, they're not supposed to seek out certain medical attention or medical help. Okay, so that could obviously increase their risk of developing bigger issues with pain. Um, individual risk could be communication barriers. We talked a little bit about this with age, them not being able to communicate that they're in pain, the very young like infants and also old, as well as like individuals who develop dementia or Alzheimer's. This might be an issue. Um, we would consider these individuals nonverbal. Um, cognitive impairment, a lot of times cognitive impairment also goes along with that nonverbal. Um, if they have a cognitive issue and they aren't able to then communicate to you the pain they're feeling, they may be at a higher risk. Certain mental health conditions, okay, mental health conditions can contribute to more chronic pain and then chronic pain actually increases the mental health problem. It's kind of a vicious cycle that happens there with chronic pain and mental health. And then of course injury. There are going to be times that if you are more prone to injury or you are in a type of um, injury prone occupation or or you take like risks and you do dangerous things, that injury can put you at that higher risk of developing pain. All right, so let's talk about some assessment here. When we look at pain, we take a history, a physical exam um, with both of that. So medical, social history, physical exam, that's what you're gonna be doing with any kind of thing that we assess. Now with pain assessment, guys, we first might ask them, where is the location of the pain? Where can you pinpoint where the problem is? Okay, so they might give you a location. It might be very specific or it might be more general. Also, the intensity, this is the pain scale. This is like when you go to the doctor and they tell you, okay, what's your pain on a scale from zero to 10? Zero being no pain, 10 being the worst pain you've ever felt. 
you're going to give them some sort of number. Okay, that number is going to help determine where you are on a scale. A lot of times with this pain scale, they'll also have pictures. Those pictures are to help individuals who do not understand the number system. Um, and even with kids, so they can say, well, I feel like this is a sad face or the crying face or whatever it might be. The quality of the pain. Describe it. Is it a burning? Is it a throbbing? Is it sharp? Okay, you need to describe the quality of the pain. The onset, when did it start? How long, duration-wise, has it lasted? Does it come and go? Is it constant? Those types of things may need to be figured out, asked. Um, alleviating and relieving factors. Are there certain things that when you do them, it makes it where the pain starts to go away? It helps like certain medications or certain behaviors like icing or using a hot pack or taking a warm bath. Are there certain things that help with the pain, alleviating it, making it less? And then effects on function and quality of life. Does this pain affect you from doing what you normally would do? Hey, okay. are you no longer to work, able to work out like you normally would? Can you not stand as long? Can you not sit as long? Is there some quality of life issues that come into play because of that pain? Now, it's important when somebody is dealing a lot of times with a main pain issue is that we then develop after assessment a treatment plan. And after that treatment plan is intact for a while, we want to then do a reassessment to see if it's actually working. Okay, has the location of the pain changed? Is the intensity different? Is the quality different? We want to reassess that over and over again to see if treatments are actually um, being successful. And with this, guys, it is to set also realistic goals. It may not be to get rid of the pain completely, but it may be to where you can become more functional or where you're able to stand longer or walk further. These need to be goals that are set and constantly reassessed. All right, so treatment. Pharmacology-wise, guys, with drugs, we need to be very careful. There's different types of pain medication, but some of those pain medications, especially opiates, are very addictive. Okay, and this has created a big problem in some individuals. Okay, so we need to be careful about what kinds of medications we give and also how we give those medications. Some medications can be given orally through a pill. Others may need to be given through like a patch, like a pain pain patch through transdermal. It might be through a shot. It could be through an IV. Again, it depends on the type of pain and what we're dealing with. Surgical intervention could need to be taken, be the next step. Surgical interventions could be things like nerve blocks, putting in nerve blocks, um, joint injections, even joint replacements if the pain is in the joint area. Um, it could also deal with like fusion of the spine if the pain is dealing with that area of the back. So again, there could be different surgical interventions. Um, Non-pharmacological strategies, this is a lot of times what a pain management doctor is going to focus in on more than the medication because if the patient is willing to do some of these non-medicine uh, type of strategies, it shows that they actually want to try to get better and they're not just looking for medication. Um, some of these include like massage, okay, getting massages may be helpful, acupuncture, using hot packs or even cold packs depending on which one may help with the pain. Even using things like biofeedback or hypnosis, calming techniques, meditation, those type of things might help with reducing the pain. And then even certain vitamins or herbal medications could be helpful. Okay, so this is where we briefly took a look at pain. Um, it is part of the whole idea of the concept of comfort because, again, we want to keep patients comfortable as much as possible. And pain is one of the main things that causes discomfort. And so um, that's why we took a look at it here. If you have any questions, please let me know.